Welcome to Stockholm, the most fiber city in the world. I'm Christian Matsson. I'm working as a senior advisor at ACREO, Swedish Research Institute in ICT. I will give you some small information about the ICT development in Sweden, in Stockholm, and something about our research in the ICT area. Sweden has about 9 million inhabitants, but it's a very low density uh, country. In the Stockholm area there is a million and a half inhabitants, and in the city there is uh, less than a million inhabitants. Stockholm started to roll out fiber 15 years ago, and at that time it was more a point-to-point -point infrastructure for operators. The background is that when Sweden became a member of the European Union, we have to take away our telephony monopoly. And uh, the mayor at that time was really afraid that there would be hundreds of operators coming to the city of Stockholm and all of them wanted to open the street. So the idea was to build an infrastructure that everyone, all the operators, can use on equal terms. So started to roll out fiber and promised that the owner, which is the city, will never compete with the users. So that was one of the first city networks that are operator neutral. And today there is close to 100 operators using the same network and giving access to customers, enterprises and also to public organizations. Besides that, there is 500 enterprises that use the networks. And everyone can understand that since 80% of the cost for broadband is the deployment of the infrastructure, this is really cost efficient. The last five years they started to roll out fiber to the citizen. And today there is a lot of fiber to the home. Uh, I would guess that at this moment there is something like 100,000 inhabitants that has fibre to their home. And this is what we call an open access model. So the end user can choose and change operator, which also gave us very low prices and different uh, services. Sweden is normally built and owned by housing organizations. So they do the investment in the access network and make contracts with operators or communication operators. If we look at Sweden in general, we are 290 municipalities and in more than 170 of these you can find city networks. Some of them work in the same way as Stockholm do with just the lease of dark fiber and some other act as communication operator, meaning that they put up the communication but they do not offer any services. Instead, they in turn make contracts with the operators to deliver their services. And we would say that something like 80% of these are owned by municipalities. But it's not state aid. It's not taxpayers' money. They work in traditional commercial terms like any other enterprises that you can see. So it's normal business. They lease out fiber to operators and others, and they have a revenue sharing model. The finance model is revenue sharing with service providers. So I would say that today, in many of these areas where we have city networks, 80% of the inhabitants can be reached by fiber to the home. Uh, we can also see that prices are quite low. Uh, today, many of these city networks offer 100 megabits. Some even offer a 1 gigabit to the customers. We can see that 80% of all the, the municipalities do have a broadband policy. And I guess that is the first start that the politicians, the local politicians, are aware of the importance of broadband and fiber. One problem with broadband development is that normally 
the evaluation is made on traditional return of investment calculation. Um, that is not good enough because it that did not include other values that appear in the society. So we need new methods to measure what uh, happening in the municipality. What's the impact on GDP and taxpayers and, and new enterprises? So that is really a new business model and that's the reason why municipalities has to be involved in the process and also sort of take part of the development. Fibre is crucial for the development. Uh, so we make correlations between uh, cities with fibre and cities without fibre. And uh, I would say that fibre is probably the most important tool to have new enterprises, new work, new companies and have new taxpayers moving into the municipalities. The most important thing of the broadband is, of course, not the, this uh, financial uh, situation. It's what it brings to the citizen. Uh, we can see two things that are really important. First of all, democracy. You are getting involved in the management of the local society. You are reaching all the information and you can administrate your own service from your home if you have a good fibre connection. And we can see in the cities, uh, the municipalities that have fibre, there is more e-services. So I would say that fibre is crucial, it must be operator neutral in one way or another, and you will see a huge impact on the society and the quality of life for the citizens. The broadband and the fibre appearance in Sweden and Stockholm is good. Uh, we have many good examples. But it's also very important to realise that Stockholm is Stockholm and Sweden is Sweden. Uh, we have many countries uh, around Europe. We can learn from each other, we can exchange information, but we can't really make a copy and paste it in other places, but we have to build personal networks to exchange our ideas and our experience. And I guess that the European Broadband Portal and ERISA's work is a very good example how to do that, where regions can meet and exchange their experience and ask each other. We have made effort in some of the places around the country, uh, but I'm not sure that it will work in all parts of Europe. So everyone has to make their own mistake, but you don't have to do the same mistake as we have done.